Growing up, I always enjoyed historically based films that centered itself around kings and empires. We all know about rulers who were considered great military leaders, rulers such as Alexander, Caesar, and even Genghis Khan. But considering that the continent of Africa is one of the largest continents on the planet, we should all at least know a handful of great conqueror kings. Well today, I thought I would start a mini-series on some of the greatest conqueror kings from Africa. What up African world, it's home team here and welcome back to another video of African history, culture, and worldview. And if you like this content, you can support its continued development on patreon.com. There you can find sources and more in-depth full courses on African history. Links to everything in the description box below. My desire is for this list to be a foundation for the African diaspora to continually build on. It's just a utility, if you will. It's best if we all chip in and discuss in the comment section below the question of who are truly some of the greatest African rulers when it comes to military achievements. Please keep in mind that in this series there will be many kings you guys are already familiar with, so feel free to skip. Now I think it's important to keep in mind that the history of conqueror kings of world history tends to be a mixed bag because although we celebrate them in their time, most kings who achieved military success weren't the kindest to regions they conquered, and that's just the nicest way to put it. So we should keep that in mind despite the cognitive dissonance. I think it's important that we in diaspora make our own lists because throughout ancient and medieval times, artists have always remembered their rulers in art form, whether it was through beautiful paintings, sculptures, poems, or other artistic forms. And in modern times, as mentioned before, films are now created to highlight these legendary figures. I believe that our artists have a duty to do similar work when it comes to our African greats. Anyway, I'm hoping you guys will enjoy part one of this series and decide to contribute by adding or taking away in the comment section below. Let's begin. The first king on our list will be Sunni Ali Burr. Sunni was the ruler of the Songha Empire and it was under his leadership that a small kingdom became an empire. He can be considered a founder. Sunni Ali was known locally as Sunni Aru Biro, the phrase Biro or Burr meaning great. He descended from a line of dynastic rulers who recently broke away from the Mali Empire in the 14th century. According to the Tariq al Sudan, the rule of the Sunni dynasty only extended merely to the Songhai homeland and some constituent territories. And so, by our definition, it would have only been a relatively small kingdom. But in 1463, Sunni Arubiro came to the throne, and it was under this great conqueror king that the Songhai Kingdom became a vast empire as mentioned before. Sunni's military career began with the taking of Timbuktu, which was one of the most important and perhaps the most legendary cities in all of West Africa. He accomplished this in 1469, but his next military conquest was indeed his biggest prize. The Tariq tells us that Jene had never been conquered since the town had been founded, and so the conquering of Jene by Sunni can be considered his greatest military campaign. The record tells us that Sunni laid siege to Jene for seven years and seven months, but the number seven can be seen as a symbolic number in the Abrahamic religions, so we're not exactly sure if that number can be relied on in this particular account. Regardless, the taking of Jene showed the patience of Sunni Aru Burr and his dedication to expanding the power and influence of the Songhai. Even though the legacy of Sunni Ali can be considered a mixed bag, he is remembered outside of Africa as well for the vast empire he founded. According to Lady Lugard, a British journalist and writer, the fame of Sunni Aru Burr by this time had spread beyond the limits of West Africa. He was recognized in Northern Africa as the most powerful of the black sovereigns of the West, and he's mentioned in European annals under the name of Sunni Heli king of Timbuktu, whose power was acknowledged as extending to the West Atlantic coast. Our next great conqueror king is King Payanki of ancient Kush. The 25th dynasty of Egypt is one of the most popular dynasties in Egyptian history, and King Payanki 
is one of the Nubian pharaohs who completed the conquering of Egypt. This was one of the greatest moments in not only Nubian history but Egyptian history as well because many people refer to this period as the African Renaissance. They do this because the Kushite rulers not only had a tendency to forgive their Egyptian and Libyan enemies, they also restored Nile Valley tradition and rebuilt temples and cultural artifacts. It was a restoration of African civilization if you will. And King Payanki was the one who successfully ushered in this process. One of the reasons why King Payanki can be considered among the greatest conquerors in African history was because of the relative ease in which he conquered and the psychological tools he used to win. His principal weapon seemed to be religion. He was intent on making this a holy war of sorts. One of the first documented in human history actually. According to his own stele, King Payanki ordered his men to put on the finest linen and cleanse themselves in a river so that they would be purified before a moon and fight in the shadow of his sword. In another address, he ordered his men to not only fight nobly, but to only fight during daylight and curiously for one city, he demanded that his army announce to the enemy when to expect attack. This psychological tool seemed to work as it not only instilled a sense of confidence in his men, but it also affirmed the idea that victory had already been ordained by a moon. I find it interesting because this may indeed be the first documented psychological tool that we see being used on the African continent. King Payanki not only inspired confidence but even his enemies trusted that he would keep his word as some came to him directly to surrender. King Payanki is one of the greatest conqueror kings of Africa because he effectively used multiple weapons, physical and psychological for his victory. When King Payanki had finally completed the conquering of Egypt, his stele tells us that he took all the riches and sailed back to Kush with his heart gladdened and his men chanting in jubilation. O oh, mighty ruler, O oh, mighty ruler, Payanki, O oh, mighty ruler. And last but certainly not least, we have the great Shangamar Dumbo of the Razvi Empire. Like Sunni Ali, he can be considered a founder king. Razvi was located in the modern country of Zimbabwe amongst one of the Shona peoples. As a side note, I think it's important for us as Afro-descendant people to create our own list of greats as mentioned before, because if we continue to leave it up to popular culture, we may have never heard about this legendary figure, Shangamar Dumbo. For reference, he was the Shaka Zulu before Shaka, if you will. In order to truly understand this great ruler, we have to understand where he came from and the conditions in which he formed his empire. Before the great Shangamar created his dynasty of Razvi rulers, the Mwene Mutapa Empire was the primary state in the region. The Portuguese constantly tried to get a stronghold in the region and their efforts were continually frustrated by the well-organized economic system of the Mwene Mutapa throne. That is until things went left for Mwene Mutapa with succession disputes, a common problem in world history. As Mwene Mutapa disintegrated into civil war, local Shona rulers began establishing their own militias to acquire power and to fight back against Portuguese aggression. After displays of power and positioning himself as the principal warlord in the region, Dumbo gained the respect of his men and was granted the title Shangamar, meaning Lord. With his new title and respect, Shangamar Dumbo then developed a powerful army known as the Razvi. They then became a dominant force in the northeast Zimbabwe plateau. This great Shangamar consolidated his power by defeating other kingdoms vying for power, destroying capitals, and absorbing other local Shona peoples. His first encounter with the Portuguese was at the Battle of Mwangwe in 1684. What's interesting about Shangamar Dumbo was that he didn't just use brute force to defeat the Portuguese, but he also used psychological warfare like King Payanki. He was successful at the Battle of Mwangwe, and his army ultimately went on to attack Portuguese settlements, destroy churches, and even defile their holy vessels and sacred images. What's even more impressive is that he not only took on the Portuguese, but he had to fight other African enemies as well. This was unprecedented success for his time and place. 
the Shangamires and their dynasty eventually prompted many Portuguese settlers to leave the plateau altogether and move into the Zambezi Valley. Well, I'm all out guys. Be sure to stay tuned for part 2 of Africa's greatest conqueror kings. And if you like these videos and want to support in its continued development, consider supporting the home team on Patreon.com. The link is in the description box below. Know thyself. Remember your ancestors. Peace. Hey, hey.